Sam, thank you very Hello. much for this interview. That's right. This rare, exclusive interview <laughs> that we're doing. Um, you're at Play Expo. Yeah. Your first visit to Play Expo. Tell me a little bit about what you've been up to today. It's been an amazing day. Um, started off this morning quite early. We all met for breakfast. Sort of. Um, so this is the first event that I've been to and um, heard lots of stories about what it was going to be like and nothing really prepared me for walking in and seeing all the um, all the different machines, all the noise and everything. It was absolutely fantastic and been on the fun stock Let's store. Go back a little bit. Why did you write the book about the Commodore? I mean, there's so many microcomputers out there. The reason I wrote the book is because the Commodore was my first ever computer, Commodore 64, and such nostalgic um, memories for me that it just felt like the right thing to do, you know, and I wanted people to read the book and get that, get the same sort of nostalgic feeling that I get when I sort of look at these games and sort of pixel art. And one of the main things was that it's a, uh, um, that, that I'm a graphic designer, so I wanted it to be like an art book and fuse those sort of two passions sort of together. So out of the book, what was like some of the best things, not just I'm not going to ask you the usual, you know, what's your favourite game, what's your favourite spread, I'll do that later. Um, but, you know, the experience of doing a Kickstarter, I mean, you know, to go through it is, you know, one of those experiences that unless you've done it, perhaps you don't know, tell somebody, you know, who hasn't done it before what it's like. Yeah, um, what's it like? Um, a lot of hard work. Um, it was, I mean, it was a massive learning curve for me, so sort of... One of, the, one of the best things about doing a Kickstarter was the fact that you get the sort of community around you and everyone gets behind the project and it sort of snowballs from there, which I think was amazing and very sort of touching and sort of part of that. Um, as I said, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of promotion, which obviously Games You Loved have helped me with massively. Um, but yeah, and it's just been, everyone pulls together because they want the project to happen, which I think is the, which has been the, the sort of best thing about Kickstarter. And, and you know, you it's a bit like, did you meet your heroes through the whole process, some of these guys? Absolutely, yeah, I mean, some of these guys, I mean, I've told a few people the story today that when, the, when I first had the idea for the book, I was actually going to write it myself, which seems crazy now that I was ever considering that, and a few people said to me, you should um, speak to some of these ex-developers, you know, and these guys were my heroes from childhood, you know, they, they did these games like Robocop and Batman the Movie and games like that, and it... You know, the thought of actually getting them to write the book was crazy. Didn't think it would ever happen, and it sort of started to happen. I started asking a few people, and they eventually said yes, and it sort of snowballed from there again. And yeah, a lot of the guys are my sort of heroes that are in it. So, so why did you choose Funstuck as a company to, you know, work with on this? It's, you know, you could have done it with a number of websites or you know other people to get your um, book out there. Yeah, I think the reason I chose Funstock was really because they shared the same passion, I think, for the book and for retro gaming, um, rather than using a generic bookstore. You know, obviously, the fun stocks specialise in retro, so it seemed like a perfect fit, and they're really passionate about the product. So. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how we work with you over the Kickstarter? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I first um, got got to know Games You Loved and Chris from Games You Loved. Um, I think it was, it might have been before my campaign started, or at the very start, and um, very quickly became a sort of sort of marketing partner, I suppose, in that. And the guys have helped me loads with promotion and um, advice, mainly about how to promote the campaign, which has been invaluable. I must admit, there was a point um, halfway through the Kickstarter where, not that I got relaxed, but I suppose I did a little bit. I think I was very near to being funded, and I took my foot off the gas a little bit. And I think it was just having that person there to say, "No, come on," you know do this and push it on more and I think it wouldn't have been the, su the success it was if it wasn't for games you loved for sure. So why should I be excited about your Amiga book which is out on Monday? Tell me about that. It's going to be it's, it's going to be the next in the, in the compendium series of books so it's going to follow a very similar style to the Commodore 64 book. It's almost going to be like a big brother or a big sister to that book. Um, I'm going to take all the learnings from the Commodore book, the Commodore 64 book and apply them to the Amiga book. So it's, I'm going to be offering a hardback version of the book. There's going to be more editorial content. I'm going to be um, featuring different software houses, like Team 17 and Sensible Software. Um, it's just going to be, I don't want to say better, but it's going to be bigger and better than the Commodore 64 book. And I've got some amazing people contributing already, like Martin Edmondson, 
and the guy who created Flashback, um, Gary Penn, Steve Jarrett, um, Jim Sachs, who's an amazing uh, Amiga pixel artist. Mm. So yeah, I think it's going to be, I'm really, really excited for it starting on Monday. So in terms of Amiga, I'll ask you that, and both the Commodore, what's your favourite game on both? Would you say? You um, have to choose one. I'd probably say um, on the Amiga, definitely Secret Monkey Island. That was my game on the on the Amiga. I lost hours and hours to that. Um, on the C64, I'd probably say Batman the Movie by Ocean. Is it nostalgia or is it just a good game? I think it is. Um, well, it is a good game, but it's nostalgia as well. Um, I remember Christmas 1989 when I was bought Batman the Movie and came um, in the usual Ocean box. But instead of the blue ocean logo, it was the gold logo. They'd made it gold and it just looked so special, you know, and um, the person who gave it to me is, is, is no longer with us, so I have sort of nostalgic memories and fond memories of playing that on that Christmas. It reminds me of that person. Finally, have to do it. Customary. <laughs> Sam Dyer, give us Games You Love a nice big fat shout out on YouTube. GamesYouLove.com is the best retro gaming website out there and you should go and check them out now.